children uh, let's study the lesson then gandhi came this is the first uh, lesson of the second unit already we discussed the title of the second unit in my previous session yeah uh, the title is uh, words and deeds how important or what impact uh, do uh, these words and deeds half in our day to day life situations uh, we are going to uh, yeah analyze all these things uh, we have three uh, lessons right so first lesson in this unit is then gandhi came uh, in this uh, lesson uh, nehru jawaharlal nehru uh, analyzes uh, gandhi ji okay uh, his assessment about uh, mahatma gandhi it is an excerpt uh, taken from uh, the much accounted uh, work of uh, nehru titled discover of india i think you might have heard this uh, work already anyway so in this lesson nehru uh, observes the true uh, personality of gandhi ji right there is no need for you to uh, yeah describe about mahatma gandhi okay we all know uh, this personality right uh, here in this lesson right for our own sake let us have these three divisions right in the first phase we have this idea uh, india's okay the situation of india uh, immediately after uh, world war right uh, then uh, how uh, people in india were suffering and what type of life they were leading right so here nehru gives a brief picture about indians totally they were uh, yeah scared about uh, this uh, in british imperialism a foreign uh, yeah rule uh, they were caught up by uh, different types of um, yeah uh, fears right so there were number of uh, issues right so uh, all these types of things uh, they were uh, having a type of a monster like right so they feared of these uh, monsters right then um, uh, after when the situation was uh, going on like this yeah nobody had this thought of uh, having uh, yeah uh, somebody somebody to help them right so they were helpless people in india were totally helpless and hopeless right so totally india according to nehru was a derelict nation right uh in this situation right uh, everybody was uh, waiting for someone to come and help them in such a situation who came uh, well gandhi ji came so uh, nehru observes that gandhi ji came into indian politics in the right time uh, when india actually uh, was in need of uh, such a person to guide uh, india and indians right so uh, arrival of gandhi ji that is the second phase of this lesson okay nehru uh, says uh, what type of uh, change uh, came here uh, immediately after the arrival of gandhi ji right uh, then um, nehru says uh, how could gandhi ji influence uh, indians right and then um, his uh, st- his uh, ty- uh, method of uh, teaching and uh, his um, uh, yeah ideologies right and his um, uh, yeah uh, principles right so all these all these things we can uh, get uh, from the second phase of this lesson right then um, uh, according to nehru gandhi ji uh, was uh, guiding gandhi ji was directing indians uh, to the right course right uh, so he uh, really uh, understood the situation of indians so he was acting to the uh, need of the people that is why he was like a uh, an expert psychologist right so as as a psychologist uh, yeah working with people's mind ne- uh, nehru says gandhi ji acted so so that helped uh, him uh, to have a very uh, strong uh, yeah relationship with the people and right then uh, nehru says uh, 
Gandhiji's yeah Gandhiji's dream about India that we see in the last phase of the lesson. So uh, what type of India Gandhiji uh, yeah uh, dreamt? Okay, right. so uh, that uh, dreams uh, Gandhiji shared to us, right? So all these things we can see in this lesson. So I think uh, you have to read from first to last and uh, yeah keep on uh, yeah try to keep all these points one by one. Okay, now I'm giving here the main points of this lesson. Yeah, here you can see the first phase of the lesson. There is the uncertain condition of India is uh, given, right? Uh, how was it? Humiliation, unemployment, poverty, desperation. All these um, situations um, here existed. Now, second phase, the arrival of Gandhiji. What was the change then? There saw political freedom taking new shape. After his arrival, they removed the black pole of fear. Truth followed fearlessness. People wanted freedom. Villages were made aware of the exploitation. Okay, these changes were felt immediately after Gandhiji's arrival. Right. In the lesson, then we get uh, what was Gandhiji's teachings and his methods. Right. Mainly, uh, he taught Indians fearlessness, truth. Then, um, giving up British given titles. Then also, he taught Indians about non-violence and non-cooperation. Okay? His action or work, uh, uh, actually it was uh, uh, aimed at two levels. One side, uh, challenging and resisting foreign rule. Then he also wanted to fight against our own social evils uh, like a minority problem, raising depressed classes, removing untouchability. Okay. Towards the end of the lesson, we have uh, uh, Gandhiji's uh, dreams about India. Uh, he wanted uh, in India, even the poorest shall feel that it is their own country. Right. Then he also said all communities in India shall live in perfect harmony. Then there will be no class distinctions, no untouchability, no intoxicating drinks and drugs. Thus Nehru concluded, Gandhiji was a man with full of confidence, right, uh, with unusual kind of power, astonishingly vital, exemplary leadership. He possessed. Okay, that's all. You have uh, listened to these main points of this lesson. Now we have to answer all these questions. So take uh, your notebook and uh, write all these answers in your English notebook. By answering these questions, I think you all will be uh, having one more chance to uh, go through the lesson deeply and uh, you will have a clear uh, or a thorough picture about the lesson. Okay, so uh, first question. What is referred to as the all-powerful monster? Answer. The anger, humiliation and hopelessness felt by the Indian people after World War I was the all-powerful monster and they couldn't escape from its grip. Second one, what was the impact of the First World War? Answer, the First World War had a terrible impact on the Indian people as they were cut off from the land and could not do any kind of manual or technical work. This resulted in growing unemployment and poverty and the people felt helpless and hopeless. Number three, what does Nehru mean by and then Gandhi came? Answer, the Indians were in a state of darkness because of their hopelessness and they had no one to guide them. It was at this point that Gandhiji came into their lives and gave them hope and showed them a way out of the darkness. Number four, what was the essence of Gandhiji's teaching? Answer, the essence of his teaching was fearlessness and truth. He wanted all actions to be controlled by these values so as to help the common people. He also said that people should not be exploited, especially the peasants and the workers, as this resulted in poverty and misery. 
Number five. What does the word abhaya mean? Abhaya means fearlessness. It doesn't mean just physical courage, but the absence of fear from the mind. Six. What did Gandhi ji exhort the people to do? Gandhi ji exhorted the people not to be afraid. The British ruled India through putting fear into people. Fear of the army, the police, the secret service, the official class, laws, prison, landlords, agent, money lender, unemployment and starvation. Gandhi ji wanted to remove this fear. 7. What did Gandhi ji do to remove fear from the minds of people? Answer. He told the people not to be afraid. Fear builds its ghosts which are more fearsome than reality itself. When reality is calmly analyzed and its consequences willing accepted, fear goes away. Suddenly, the black film of fear was removed from the people's minds. The need for falsehood and secretive behavior was lessened. 8. Why was Gandhiji compared to a psychologist? Answer. Gandhiji was compared to a psychologist because he brought a psychological change in people. A psychologist probes deep into the patient's past to find out the origins of his complexes. Gandhiji did the same. He probed deep into the minds of Indians and exposed the needlessness of fear. They were made or to feel ashamed for accepting an alien role that had degraded and humiliated them. They were now filled with a desire not to submit to the repressive rule any longer. Number 10. What according to Gandhiji is the truth? Answer. Truths are relative and absolute truth is beyond us. Different persons take different views of truth and each person is powerfully influenced by his own background, training and impulses. Gandhiji believed that truth is what an individual himself feels and knows to be true. Number 11. How did Gandhiji influence the people of India? Answer. Gandhiji influenced the people of India in different degrees. Some people changed completely, some changed only partly. Different people reacted differently, but everyone was influenced one way or the other. 12. What was the twofold action involved in Gandhiji's exhortation? Answer. One action involved challenging and resisting foreign rule. The other action involved fighting against our own social evils like untouchability and differentiation of social classes. 13. What was the visible change in the value system of the country? Answer. Gandhiji wanted people to give up their titles given by the British. Although not many people gave up their titles, the prestige associated with the titles lessened. The pomp and splendor associated with the Viceroy's court was seen as foolish. Rich men were now not anxious to show off their riches anymore. They adopted simpler ways of dressing and became almost indistinguishable from the common people. 14. What was the influence of Gandhiji in the villages? Answer. Gandhiji sent leaders to the villages to awaken the peasants. The peasants were shaken up and began to come out of their shell. 15. What was the India of Gandhiji's dream? Answer. He wanted an India where the poorest should feel that it was their country. They should have an effective voice in the ruling. He wanted India not to have class distinctions. He wanted India to be a place where People lived in perfect harmony. There was no room for untouchability, intoxicating rings and drugs. Women were to have equal rights with men. 16. What according to Gandhiji was the essential culture of India? Answer. Indian culture according to Gandhiji is neither Hindu nor Islamic but a fusion of all. Although proud of his Hindu inheritance, Gandhiji tried to give Hinduism a kind of universal attire that included all religions within the fold of truth. He refused to narrow his cultural inheritance. 17. What was the psychological revolution that Gandhiji brought about? Answer. Gandhiji was an astonishingly vital man full of self-confidence and unusual kind of power. 
he fascinated the masses of India as he stood for equality and freedom of each individual. He attracted them like a magnet. To them he seemed to link up the past with the future and make the bad present appear as a stepping stone for a future of life and hope. Write a paragraph about how did Gandhiji enlighten the freedom fighters? Answer. When Gandhi came, India was in a bad shape. Humiliation, unemployment, poverty and desperation were everywhere. When Gandhiji came, things changed. Through his conference, unusual power, astonishing vitality and exemplary leadership, Gandhiji influenced millions of people in India in varying degrees. Some changed completely, others were affected only partly. His call for action was twofold. One involved in challenging and resisting foreign rule. The other was fighting against her own social evils. His principal aims were freedom through peaceful means, national unity, solution of minority problems, improvement of the depressed classes and the ending of untouchability. The effect of his leadership was electrifying. People were no more willing to suffer under foreign domination. They wanted freedom and they were willing to make any sacrifice for it. Okay, here Neha, as one of the participants of this group is discussion, uh, presents her views. Okay, so it gives me immense pleasure to stand here in this uh, program and I would like to express my views on this given topic. Uh, women will enjoy same right as men. As you know, Gandhiji has rightly said that women should enjoy the same right as men. This is still a dream in India after 68 years of independence. Women form 50% of the population and by denying them their rights, we are obstructing the development of the country. Women should have equal rights as men. That's all I want to speak about this topic. Thank you.